What's going on, YouTube? So, lick a tongue. On paper, its stats are not very good, being about 60 points higher than the first form starters. And as far as level up moves, it doesn't really get anything good. I mean, Defense Curl is useful for the badge boost glitch, but where things really start to turn around for Lickitung is in its TMs. And we have quite the variety. It is a normal Pokemon after all. And it gets access to probably the second best badge boosting move in the game in Swords Dance. I'll never understand why Game Freak didn't give this thing Lick in Gen 1. Or a signature move at that. I mean, I guess they fixed their mistake in later gens by giving it Lick and by giving it an evolution in Licky Licky, but I think they should have gave it a signature move as well. One advantage Lickitung does have with its starting moveset is that Brock isn't too big of a problem, although we still are going to have to do some early game training. I'm going to take on all of the bug catchers in Viridian Forest. I don't bother backtracking to the optional rival, which I'm going to do in a later run coming, but with battling all of the bug catchers along with the junior light years trainer in Brock's gym, we can reach level 10. And that's the perfect level to challenge Brock at. And with Brock, you're just looking for some good confusion luck and flinch luck. We outspeed Geodude, so realistically, I either want to flinch it with Stomp or I want it to hit itself. We make it past Geodude with nearly half of our HP, and next is Onyx. And it's the same strategy with Onyx. Because we don't outspeed it, we can't rely on flinch luck with Stomp, so we really need it to hit itself and then just rely on rap luck. And for transparency purposes, I played this Brock battle at 3 or 4 times speed, so at 1 times speed, this is anywhere from an 8 to 15 minute battle. It was around 3 and a half minutes on the 3 or 4 times game speed. After the long slog though, we're able to finally get by Brock. And now, we can start training once again. I'm going to be taking on optional trainers to better prepare for Rival 2 and Misty. Since we won't be outspeeding Pidgeotto or Misty Starmie, and Pidgeotto has the annoying sand attack, I want to make sure we can brute force it down as quick as possible. In Mount Moon, I'm going to pick up a few key TMs, one being Water Gun, along with battling some optional trainers and picking up the TM for Mega Punch. Water Gun makes quick work of the optional Hiker, this Raticate Grunt gives great XP, I take the Dome Fossil, and we can make our way to Cerulean City now. For Lickitung, it really is a tough choice on whether to battle Rival 2 or Misty first and I decide I'm going to take on the trainers in Misty's gym first, and then see where to go from there. The trainer battles are pretty easy, and I figure after reaching level 19 after battling the second trainer, let's try our luck against Rival 2. Unfortunately, this battle starts in the worst possible way. Pidgeotto outspeeds us, and it hits us with Sand Attack, but it doesn't get up not just one, but two total Sand Attacks, and I have a total of six misses in a row. Eventually I give up on trying to confuse it and I just go for Mega Punch. The nice thing is is that we crit with our first landing Mega Punch, which I think Lickitung has about a 5% chance to do. We eventually get by the Pidgeotto, but we've got pretty low HP for the remaining Pokemon. Thankfully Abra is an easy one shot and it can't hurt us anyway. Rattata is next, and while it does some chip damage with Quick Attack, Mega Punch lands one-shotting it. Last is Charmander. Had it just gone for Ember, we probably would have lost this one, but thankfully we hit two out of our three Mega Punches to knock it out. And from here, you already know what's next for Lickitung. More optional training. Well, of course, we have the mandatory trainers on Nugget Bridge. Which, after the fifth one, I have to actually go back and heal at the Pokemon Center, which does create a bit of a time loss and is a bit frustrating. But with all of the optional training coming up, it gets us to level 23, which is the target level I wanted for Misty. I did accidentally not learn Defense Curl, but it's not the end of the world to not have that move. We would be replacing it with a better badge boosting move down the line anyway. Let's go ahead and help Bill out, and then we can take on Misty. She leads with Staryu, and I'm not worried about this thing. While I do miss my first Mega Punch, our second one hits, nearly knocking it out, and I just go for Rap to finish it off. 
Star me is what I'm kind of worried about, because if it crits enough, we'll lose. I try to confuse it with supersonic, which we do first try. From here, I'm just gonna go for rap. I want to make sure this thing can't attack me, and thankfully it attacks itself when it does have a chance. That's two gym badges down for Lickitung, and Misty gives us the TM for Bubble Beam, which will be an immediate upgrade over Water Gun. From here, there really isn't much to do, so we're gonna go ahead and pick it up on the SSAN, which we're going to get another move upgrade. We battle the youngster in this room for TM08 Body Slam, which goes on our moveset immediately, and will be an immediate upgrade over Mega Punch. And Body Slam and Bubble Beam, combined with the fact that Pidgeotto doesn't use any sand attacks against us, makes Rival 3 pretty trivial. Pidgeotto just goes for Gust and Quick Attack against us, as Body Slam is able to two-shot it. And while the rest of his Pokémon do outspeed us, which will be a common theme in this run, there's nothing they can do. Raticate's Quick Attack doesn't do much, Body Slam one-shots it. Kadabra's Confusion doesn't do much, Body Slam one-shots it. And Charmeleon, even if it would've burned us with Ember, we have Bubble Beam so it wouldn't've affected us anyway. Although I wonder if Body Slam would've got the one-shot. Either way, that's Rival 3 out of the way, and we can go ahead and face Lieutenant Surge next. And although Lickitung may have abysmal stats, it hasn't had a reset to this point. Voltorb thankfully misses Sonic Boom, Body Slam is able to knock it out over two hits. Pikachu could attack us, but Surge just goes for an X speed, Body Slam one shots it. Raichu doesn't bother to use its strongest attack in Thunderbolt, it goes for Thunder Shock, although it does paralyze us but two body slams gets the job done. The next portion of the game is going through Rock Tunnel, which normally we'd probably have to worry about the self-destructing hiker, but with Bubble Beam on our moveset, he's really not a challenge, neither is any other trainer in Rock Tunnel. Let's go ahead and pick this up post Rock Tunnel as we head to Celadon City. I want to make my way there ASAP because I want to get the Rocket Game Corner over with, along with Pokemon Tower, because I want to get access to Silphco ASAP, because there's two very important items we can get there, which I'll touch on later. For now, we're going to take on Giovanni in the game corner, and I actually got poisoned by one of the grunts outside of his chamber, but thankfully Onyx and Rhyhorn are both one-shots with Bubble Beam. Kangaskhan is a bit of a problem. Had it just kept going for Comet Punch, it would have probably given Lickitung its first reset of the run, but thankfully, thanks to Giovanni's bad AI with Rage and a Guard spec, we're able to get by. Before proceeding to Pokemon Tower, there's a few more errands we're going to take care of, including some Celadon shopping. I buy a Pokedoll along with three proteins since it's all I can afford at this point. I get a Freshwater, but I'm not going to bother getting Ice Beam from the little girl. I pick up Fly, and then we can head to Pokemon Tower to face Rival 4. Now I'm sure you're probably wondering, why didn't you pick up Ice Beam in Celadon City? Well, we don't really have any need for it, and we can get Blizzard later. Plus, it wouldn't be any use in this battle. Which, for this battle, I really should have taught Thunderbolt beforehand. We knock out the Pidgeotto with two body slams. It unfortunately got a sand attack up on me before getting knocked out, and you can see the luck I'm having against Execute. Body slam can't knock it out. We do paralyze it, but it just keeps going for barrage, doing very little chip damage. But here's why I should have taught Thunderbolt. We have to deal with Gyarados next, and it knows Hydro Pump, which gets a huge critical hit bringing us to red health. We can knock it out, but Kadabra outspeeds and can finish us off. So with its first loss of the run, it's time to change up Lickitung's moveset. I decide to teach it Thunderbolt in place of Rap, because Rap has essentially run its course. I did have one more loss to Rival 4 before this battle. With Thunderbolt on our moveset, we make quick work of Pidgeotto. We get pretty lucky against Execute, as it doesn't go for Stun Spore or anything like that, and Barrage does very little damage. Although Gyarados does still get off a Hydro Pump against us, Thunderbolt one-shots it. And from here, the rest of the battle is pretty simple. Kadabra, while it does outspeed, it just goes for Teleport, it goes down in one shot, and for Charmeleon, we still have Bubble Beam. Although it burns us, which is very annoying, and you'll see why soon enough. 
and you're actually going to see very soon with the first mandatory channeler we have to face in Pokemon Tower. Because of Lickitung's garbage special, all of the Ghastly will be two shots. And against the first Chandler coming up, because of the burn Charmeleon put against us, we actually lose this battle. Because Nightshade can still hit Pokemon like Lickitung, and burn damage happens at the end of every turn, and the fact that we had half HP going into this battle, the second Ghastly is able to confuse us, and burn and confusion damage take me out. Once again, I take a bit of a time loss just to head back to the Pokemon Center so I can get past that first channeler successfully. From here, the rest of Pokemon Tower is pretty simple, and we can rescue Mr. Fuji and finally make our way to Saffron City where Lickitung is going to get another moveset upgrade. I'm going to do what Gym Leader Matt calls a half Sylph Co. Essentially, I'm here for two, really three very important items. I'll battle the Grunt and get the card key here, and the first item we can get is TMO3 Sword Stance. The second, after battling this Rocket Grunt, we can get the Carbos, we can pick up the Rare Candy, but most importantly, TM26 Earthquake. I put both of these on Lickitung's moveset right away. I was debating if this was too soon to teach them to Lickitung, but with gym leaders like Koga, Giovanni, and Blaine still looming, I guess there's no better time. We can also do some optional training on Cycling Road with these moves on our moveset, although I do get poisoned by the first biker I face. And unfortunately for Lickitung, after battling a second biker, I need to backtrack to the Pokemon Center to heal. So yeah, that's another bit of a time loss. There was only one more biker that I wanted to face, although ideally there's two I could have faced, but I wouldn't have had enough HP to make it to Fuchsia City. And I do face said biker, and this one poisons me as well. But I do have enough HP to actually make it to Fuchsia, and then I'm gonna head to the Safari Zone first just to pick up the final HMs of the run. After beating Koga, I'll have my choice of Rival Fievel or Blaine. And speaking of Koga, taking the early trip to Sylphco to pick up Swords Dance and Earthquake makes this battle extremely easy. I only need to set up one Swords Dance, and I'm able to one-shot all of his Pokemon with the exception of Weezing, which Koga just uses an X attack instead of attacking me. Had it gone for self-destruct, it would have been interesting to see if I would have survived or not. With Koga out of the way, I decide we're going to head to Sylphco next. We're just under level 40, and with the right amount of setup, I think we can take down Rival Fievel. Unfortunately, I was in for a bit of a rude awakening, and you'll see why in the battle coming but I'm sure you can already guess what the problem's going to be before I even say it. Two words, Sand Attack. Against Pidgeot, I start by setting up Sword Stance. I want to set up three, and after my second one, Pidgeot goes for a Sand Attack, and this is going to affect me for the rest of the battle. Thunderbolt isn't able to one-shot it, and it's just chipping me down with Wing Attack and Quick Attack as I miss three Thunderbolts in a row before we finally knock it out. Execute is next, and this thing paralyzes me with Stun Spore, and sets up Leech Seed, and a Reflect, so that Body Slam can't one-shot it even with our attack boost. Although we are able to get by Execute eventually, when we eventually hit a Body Slam, Gyarados just finishes us off with Dragon Rage. And I don't bother trying this fight again. Instead, I'm gonna go through Sylphco and train up some. And something that probably could have helped out that I'll have to reconsider if I ever redo this run is doing some extra training on Cycling Road and in Koga's Gym. Since we do take the early trip to Sylphco, Sword Stance and Earthquake would make quick work of all of their Pokemon. After my quick training session, I'm level 43 and reach another damage rounding threshold and decide to take on the rival one more time. Although we have a mediocre special stat, I'm hoping that Thunderbolt can get the one shot, or at least paralyze, and we don't see Sand Attack, and unfortunately neither happen. Thunderbolt still can't get the one shot, and Pidgeotto Sand Attacks me. Not once, but twice. I do have two Sword Stance set up, Body Slam hits the very next turn, knocking out Pidgeot. Next is Execute, and while I miss my first Body Slam and it sets up Leech Seed, we hit the second to knock it out. Next is Gyarados. 
Thanks to Badge Boost, we outspeed it and Body Slam one-shots it. We level up going into Alakazam, however, so there goes the Speed Badge Boost. It just goes for Recover and then Disable as Body Slam knocks it out. Last is Charizard. All we need to do is hit. It goes for Rage, and we hit the next turn to take it out. All we have left is Giovanni, and I made a mistake in this Giovanni fight. I still won on my first try, but the battle took a little longer than I anticipated, only because I used Sword Stance one too many times. I meant to just set up twice, then go for straight Earthquakes, but I accidentally set up three times, just misclicking. I might have been able to even use one Sword Stance and sweep with Earthquake, but I guess we'll never know. No harm, no foul. Let's go ahead and wrap up business in Saffron by heading to Sabrina's Gym. With what's to come with Blaine, Giovanni, Rival6, and the League still lurking, I decided to do some extra training in Sabrina's Gym before taking her on. We're nearly level 47 when we challenge her. We're not going to outspeed any of her Pokemon, and Kadabra makes me pay with a critical hit Psybeam bringing me to red health. While Body Slam does get the one shot, I don't think we're going to make it through this battle. Mr. Mime just goes for Light Screen, Body Slam finishes it off, but next is the pesky Venomoth. Stun Spore paralyzes me, we fail to one shot it, and it takes me down with Psybeam and Leech Life. I still have that Max Potion in my bag from Sylphco, so I use that and try again. This time Kadabra doesn't get a critical hit. I decide to set up a Sword Stance, but I really should have waited before knocking it out with Body Slam. I should have went straight Body Slam, and then set up all my Sword Stance on Mr. Mime, just to get maximum badge boost. It's just spamming Barrier, so I decide to go for full setup here. And although with the badge boost, we don't outspeed Venomoth or Alakazam, Venomoth doesn't go for Stun Spore, it just goes for weak Leech Life, we can one-shot it of course, and Alakazam just goes for Psy Wave. Had it gone for something like Psychic and Crit, we might have lost. That's five gym badges down with three to go, and it's time to get on the road again. I bet you thought we were probably going to go to Cinnabar next. Well, we still have to battle Erica. Don't worry, I didn't forget about her, although we could have battled her after doing that half-sylph trip earlier. And if we battled her after that half-sylph trip, we would have needed Sword Stance for setup to probably win this one. Even though we're nearly 20 levels higher than her highest level Pokémon, we still can't one-shot them with Body Slam, although Victory Bell goes down in one shot thanks to a crit. With Erica out of the way, we can now head towards Cinnabar Island to Blaine's Gym. And I'm gonna bring up something. Earlier in the run, you're probably wondering why I skipped Ice Beam. Lickitung can learn Ice Beam. Surely this move would have been useful to you sometime in this run. You would have been able to do Erica earlier, you'd have a move that would take care of Pidgeotto, Pidgeot, and Execute. Why skip it? And the answer is to save some time. Like I said, after doing the half self trip, we could have went to Erica and Sword Stance and Body Slam would have got the job done, but I really wanted TM14 Blizzard. Really, ice moves are only going to be useful for Lance. Outside of Lance, I have no use for Ice Beam or even Blizzard for that matter. But enough of that rambling, let's go ahead and take on Blaine. And this one's simple, set up a Sword Stance and sweep with Earthquake. Unfortunately, Growlithe burns me with its first and only Ember, so I do have to set up one more Sword Stance for the rest of his Pokémon. But Earthquake is able to one-shot both Ponyta and Rapidash, and although it's a two-shot on Arcanine, it just misses Fire Blast twice. Seven gym badges in hand, let's waste no time and head straight to the battle with Giovanni. And this battle is essentially the same as Blaine's. Set up a sword stance, sweep with Earthquake. None of his Pokemon are able to burn me, which is good, and Dugtrio misses a sand attack. And although Rhydon is a two-shot with Earthquake, it does have tremendous defense, Stomp isn't enough to take me out. The gym leader gauntlet is finished, but we have the six toughest trainers ahead of us. The good news is, the rival's Pidgeot no longer has Sand Attack, and we have a Pokémon in Rhyhorn that we can set up against. I don't follow my own advice though. I set up on the Pidgeot, like I always do, when I really shouldn't. But it doesn't cost me. This is a first try victory, spoilers. It's just set up three Swords Dance and Sweep. 
We do level up after knocking out the Rhyhorn, so Gyarados, Charizard, and Alakazam will all outspeed us. While Gyarados does get some good luck with Bite flinching, and Charizard's Flamethrower brings us all the way down to 28 HP, we are able to barely get by. We have the five toughest trainers remaining, and I think Bruno could be a huge problem. We're a slow normal type. Hitmonlee will outspeed us. High Jump Kick will do a lot of damage. Machamp will probably outspeed us. Submission will probably one-shot us. Agatha could be a problem. Yes, Earthquake will be able to one-shot all of her Ghost and most likely Arbok, but they're all going to outspeed us and will have a chance to put us to sleep, confuse us. We could be in for a bad time. I do a little bit of last minute extra training in Victory Road, along with picking up the rare candy, and we're level 57 by the time we get to the league. Up first is Lorelei. Against Dugong, I go for straight body slam because I want this thing to use rest on turn two, which it does. During that time, I can set up three sword stance, I outspeed it by the time I use my third one, Body Slam is enough to one-shot it, and from here, the rest of the battle is a sweep. Although Cloyster does hang on from a Body Slam, and Jinx does outspeed me, along with Lapras due to leveling up after knocking out Jinx, there's really no threat of ever losing this battle. Before battling Bruno, I'm going to pop 5 rare candies to bring myself to level 63 above 2 damage rounding thresholds. I'm not going to spend too much time on this battle, but just like with Lorelei, set up 3 Swords Dance and sweep. Although his first Onyx takes 2 Earthquakes to knock out, we can knock out the rest of his team with a single Body Slam or Earthquake. Next up is Agatha, and this is where things start to get bad. Not only does Gengar outspeed us, but Earthquake isn't able to get a one-shot. Because I decided to set up the next turn, Gengar is able to get off another Nightshade on us before we knock it out, and we're below half HP going into Golbat. Even with Badge Boost, we still can't outspeed Golbat, and Thunderbolt can't one-shot it. It's able to confuse us, and we hit ourselves. Wing Attack does little chip damage as we knock it out, but now we have to deal with Haunter, and a single Nightshade can knock us out. And although I do hit myself to bring myself to 15 HP, Haunter doesn't bother attacking us, and Earthquake can knock it out. But Arbok can easily finish us from here, and it does just that with Acid. I make it back to Agatha on the next attempt, but Haunter puts me to sleep, uses Dream Eater, and then two Nightshades to finish me off. My third attempt against Agatha starts in the weirdest way. I go for Earthquake right away, but she switches into Golbat, so of course I miss. From here I decide to set up and she switches back into Gengar. I go for Earthquake, she switches back into Golbat, so I miss again. Golbat then goes for Haze, eliminating my boost from Sword Stance, so now I decide to go just straight Body Slam and then set up again. It confuses me and I hit myself, and this already isn't looking good. I hit myself three times in a row. Golbat uses Haze eliminating my confusion. I decide to try to set up a sword stance, but at this point in the battle, by the time I knock it out, I have 58 HP. The first Gengar comes back out and confuses me. Earthquake gets through the confusion to knock it out. Out comes Haunter. She decides to switch into Arbok, but we hit it with Earthquake and knock it out. Through the confusion, two for two. Back out comes Haunter. We're confused no more, Earthquake knocks it out, but Nightshade from Gengar will KO us. It goes for Dream Eater, and we get the win. That was frustrating. Before taking on Lance, I'm going to pop three rare candies to get to level 68, along with teaching TM14 Blizzard in place of Earthquake. Next up is Lance, and for how frustrating Agatha was, Lance was a one-shot sweep. Although all of his Pokemon did outspeed us, and Dragonite gave me a scare with Hyper Beam, but really the only way we would have lost this battle is if it crit, or if Aerodactyl would have just probably flinched us or crit with Bite. The only thing preventing us from getting our tongue across the finish line is the champion. He leads with Pidgeot. I open up with Blizzard, which fails to get the one-shot, which is a bit surprising. Pidgeot retaliates with Wing Attack, as Thunderbolt finishes it off. Next up is Alakazam. 
We're not going to outspeed this thing. It opens with Psybeam, thankfully not getting a critical hit. Body Slam misses the one shot, but it just goes for recover. We're able to get the one shot the next turn. We level up going into Rhydon, and this is perfect. Against Rhydon, I can set up three Sword Stance freely, and if it uses Tail Whip and Leer, like it is here, that's just going to further badge boost us and really help out. With full setup and extra badge boost, you can predict what happens from here. Blizzard takes out Rhydon, Body Slam takes out Exeggutor, Body Slam will take out Gyarados, and we outspeed Charizard, and Body Slam takes it out as well. And that's the run. Overall, Lickitung was a solid Pokemon. Its move pool really impresses me, but its base stats overall are just terrible. But it is a pure normal type Pokemon, which those tend to do very well in Generation 1. And this gets me pretty pumped to do a Pokemon like Snorlax or Kangaskhan eventually, which I think will do even better than Lickitung. But for now, Lickitung's final rankings. It finishes at a very nice level 69, with a final in-game time of 4 hours and 3 minutes. One level lower than Arbok and one minute faster than Arbok, it's going to take its place at the top of the C tier. First off, I want to give a huge shout out to Chazuel Fridays for being the first YouTube member of the channel. A few videos ago, I had mentioned how I got a new mic and was going to be using it going forward. Well, if you saw the Greninja video, then you know that that microphone didn't quite work out. I've since returned it and got something else that I'm going to try, which I'm going to set up following this video. I recently did a stream with Speedrunner0218 and Steve M Plays for their Backport series. We've got another one coming April 4th, so stay tuned for that. And other than revamping all the thumbnails on the channel again, I really don't have much to say other than thank you for the continued support. We're nearing 2,000 subs, and really I don't know what I have planned for that. We're also nearing the 3 year anniversary of the channel, and the 2 year anniversary since I uploaded my first challenge run. I feel like I should have something big planned for that, but maybe I can get the Delphox run out before then. Anyway, I'll catch y'all in my next video. You guys are incredible. Take care everyone.